This video should be about how many different outfits can Robin wear in one gardening session. <laughs> so um, we've gotten some, uh, we're pulling daylilies out, we're dividing daylilies, we're giving daylilies away. I'm reworking those areas where you can see behind me here, I've got a bunch of uh, plants waiting to go in the ground. Um, and I've got a few different projects. I'm hoping also in the next week to give you an update on containers. Um, and somebody asked me to do a video on uh, salixes on the dappled willow. So I'm hoping I can get to all of that this week. Like I said, let's see how many outfits I can, <laughs> how many outfits I can wear in one video. I don't know about you, but there's times when I look at my garden and I'm like, I need to change that. So after I did the daylily video, I was like, wow, I have way, where did I get all this orange? And I think just the clumps of these daylilies have just gotten so big. So this one is Primal Scream, that one is Kwanzo, um, and Kwanzo does spread. Um, Primal Scream doesn't spread, but the clumps keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I don't want this here anymore. So I am gonna be digging all these up, dividing them, um, and I'll show you how we divide them, and I'm giving them away. So this is the first, the first area. So let me back up so you can see. So I have Joe Pie weed here. I have Herbstone Rebecca back here. Henry Eilers uh, there in the middle. Um, that's just starting to open up. And over here is a Helianthus. There it is, <laughs> called Kareen. This is um, Helenium over here. And this is going to be orange, and I'm not going to pull that out. But this is a really purple, uh, pretty purple aster. I've got oh so easy Italian ice in here. And I've got um, cone flowers, that sombrero Baja burgundy in there. But you can't see some of this stuff. Um, it's just gotten so wild. And you know, when these grasses are fully leafed out, um, they're, they're massive and they're not going anywhere. So that's my plan. I'll show you some other areas where I'm gonna pull the orange. So right in here, uh, I have a stand of Kwanzo. Now I actually pulled out Kwanzo last year um, from this area, but it is still, I guess I didn't get it all. Um, and I really like, pardon me, um, I have green twister cone flowers in here. I have some yellow um, daylilies in here. And the Kwanzo, while it's very pretty, uh, I don't want, it's just getting too aggressive. So I'm gonna take that one out. Whoa, the sun just came out through the clouds. Sorry about that, holy cow. So I've got Primal Scream here in the middle. I've got a red one over here on the end called Firecracker, there's Primal Scream. And this one is called Why Not? It's a very soft peach. I don't know what that is, except that, you know what? I think it's actually a, a pussy willow. So I'm actually going to leave that, actually. Um, and that's kind of in the conservation area behind my house anyway. Um, but I think I'm going to pull these two out. And I'll probably pull Why Not out and move it somewhere else. And then I'm going to put some kind of evergreen, I think, here. Or maybe another Rose of Sharon. Because I've got the really tall... Um, I'm lost. I've got the really tall Norway spruces. I've got the blue spruce. I've got all this viburnum. And then I've got two big pinky winkies here. And I feel like this kind of just dead ends. Um, and I don't like it. The other thing I don't love, uh, this is a gladiola that I got called Ovati. I swear I thought it was yellow because uh, I'm not loving it in my container here. So um, when it's gone, I'll replace it. I'll see if I can find maybe a, um, a coleus to replace it today. Also, every year I have to pull Black Eyed Susans and Bee Bum out of this bed um, because they just, they just start taking over. And while I love them, um, they just, they get so aggressive and you can't see anything else. I have really pretty grasses in here. I have Baptisia in here. I have really pretty Amsonia that'll get a gorgeous gold in the fall. Um, but the Black-Eyed Susans get pretty aggressive. And you can see 
I have another stand of them over here and a very big weed I see <laughs> right over there that I need to get in there and pull out. Um, but considering I just got stung pretty bad last weekend, I'm going to be pretty careful. I'm seeing some yellow jackets, but um, look at the flocks is really beautiful right now. Those gladiolas are really pretty. And the grasses are really coming on strong now. Finally, finally, finally. Now, I don't mind the red daylilies. I love them, actually. But here again, I thought I had, wow, I thought I had three of uh, this one, which is called Sweet Aubergine. Um, and somehow Primal Scream got in here. So I'm going to pull those out and I'll put that, maybe I'll put that Why Not in here. Um, I've got a couple others that I'm going to move around. And I also bought some in, um, some cone flowers, some Russian sage, some drops of Jupiter. Um, I bought a few different things to fill in these areas when I pull out all these daylilies. So I'll show you the last area that I'm going to be pulling daylilies from. Is right here. So you can see the betony. The betony has just about finished. And there's that whole stand of primal screams in the middle. And we've got Verona Castrum right here. And I've got a couple of daylilies that I popped in there that I just got. And there's really not room for them right here. Um, so I'm going to put those down there also and, and move those things around. But the pollinators are going crazy. But again, even though it looks pretty, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that out, and I have an Amsonia over here. I think this is Storm Cloud, this one. Uh, I'm pretty sure, because String Theory is the one in the other bed that gets that beautiful gold in the fall. Um, and this is a much bigger leaf. I think it's Storm Cloud. And I'm going to take that and move it where the daylilies are, because this rose here has absolutely no room to breathe. Um, the river birch has gotten gigantic. Um, I've limbed it up a little bit, um, but I really don't have room that roses. I mean, it's doing well, um, but it's just, it's so crowded. So I want to give it some breathing space. Okay, so I mentioned that we're going to be taking out all the orange daylilies. So we're going to start over here. So we have our tools, we have a, a big shovel, and we have two pitchforks. I find the easiest way to divide hostas and daylilies is to take and put two pitchforks together and pull the clumps apart. These are gigantic at this point, and you can make probably at least four or more. Now, having said that, let me just tell you, I would not normally be dividing daylilies or digging daylilies up at this point. In the middle of the summer, you can see they're actually still blooming. They're, they're getting on their way out but I have other stuff that needs to come in. I'm giving these all away. So we're, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off all the bloomscapes and I'm gonna put those in water if anybody wants them for cut flowers. And then I have people coming tomorrow who are going to uh, pick these up. So we have Primal Scream and we have Kwanzo that we're gonna be digging out and we have quite a few of them. So once I cut the scapes, I'm gonna cut these down very low so they're easier to dig up we're going to just put them in water in buckets till the people come tomorrow. We might need to cut these a little bit shorter so we can get them in. I'm hoping to save these scapes just so people even though i think they've seen what i've shown them what i'm cutting but this way they'll have an idea what they're getting again daylilies you can cut them for cut flowers obviously they only last for a day and then another one's going to open um but this way because i have two different varieties this way they'll get to to see or choose what they want so we will be speeding this up so you won't have to sit here and watch me cut a hundred day lilies.
and I'm just popping them in water. Um, this is a, a container. I've got to say, I love this container. I think I got it from Smith and Hawken a long, long, long time ago. Um, and I used to use it all the time. We had a house in Vermont and every time we would leave on a Sunday, I would, I would cut flowers from my garden and bring them home with me. Um, and the great part was that it had, you know, has that flat base so it wouldn't tip over in the car, which was super nice. Now, anything that's already gone, we're just going to get rid of. And I just want to try and cut some of these that are, that still have flowers on them. or still have buds, buds on them. So you can see the, the scapes, this is a scape. Uh, they're, pretty, they're pretty tall on primal screen. Um, this is a really pretty daylily. Um, day, daylilies really don't ask for much. They just want some nice sun, well-drained soil and, and you're, you're good to go. So let's, Let's get this show on the road here. And now I'm going to be cutting these back just because it's so much easier to divide them that way. Um, you know, you've got a massive handful of leaves uh, like we did last night for a neighbor. We dug a clump up as a whole and then I, then I cut it because you take the help when you can get it. Um, and that's when my husband could help me. So we're just going to get these that have um, buds on them. So um, unless it's a reblooming daylily, cutting these off will not do anything. Now this is not a reblooming daylily. So once once a daylily sets its buds. Uh, which is why if you're looking for a new daylily, you want to look for the bud count on something, on that variety. Um, because once they set buds, they don't continue to make buds. Okay, I think we're just about done here. There's always a mess to go back and clean up, isn't there? Okay, and I'm trying to do this before there are a million bees around here. So you can see we have a nice pot here. Hopefully you can see that. My cameraman went away. <laughs> um, so we have a nice pot here of cut flowers that we're going to go put in the, um, underneath the deck so they're in the shade. Okay, so we're going to just cut these back to a reasonable height. We're not being particular, we're just cutting, okay? We're just trying to make this manageable to get out of the ground and to divide. Our ground is so dry and so hard that we been trying to soak these this morning to try and get them out of the ground so we're we're hoping we're going to be able to do that all right so let's get this down and then Tom's going to be digging this up because you know darn well I can't dig this up am I cutting that down far enough for you you think Okay. Right. I don't want it to be an impossible job. Like I said, do as I say, not as I do. Um, <laughs> so don't cut your daylilies back now. Wait till the end of the season. You can divide your daylilies in the spring or the late fall. This is not the optimum time to be doing it. Like I said, I have, I have other reasons why I'm doing it now. So I'm going to excuse myself for doing it wrong. <laughs> 
The other thing is that I'm going to be putting uh, some plants in here. Now, most of the country is very dry and we are no exception. So when you're putting in plants, now, you know, once daylilies are established, they're fine. You don't have to do anything. But until the plants you're putting in, and same with these, I will be explaining to the people who are getting these, um, just because daylilies don't require any maintenance um, doesn't mean when you plant them, you're not gonna have to keep them watered. You are gonna have to keep them watered. So, see if we can, we're gonna swap cameras and see if we can get, get one of these at least out of the ground and show you how we divide the daylilies. Would it be easier if I got rid of this bunch? Okay. Kind of get it out of the way a little bit. The other reason we're, it's, it's, well, it's not super early, but it's early in the morning. Trying to do this before pollinators are all over these things, because we don't want to ruin their day. And we have this lovely support in here, which is keeping them off the cone flowers. Okay, did I get enough? Yes, you did. Okay. So this is what we do. We've just dug this up, this whole clump. I've cut it down as much as I can at this point. Um, so the energy, when we put it back in the ground, will go into root development and budscape development, not into you know keeping flowers going. So we like to take two uh, pitchforks back to back, and we kind of just start in the middle. So we're gonna push down in the clump. Not always so easy. We may have to water this, and I'm gonna go help. Let me have that one. Let me get the water. All right, you do that. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to pull in opposite directions. It's very hard to ruin a day lily. Okay, we already have two clumps. Now we're going to do this again for this clump is huge. Um, so let's <laughs> pull this out. We have a bucket of water sitting right here. So let's find a good break point. Hang on, let me see. Let me make sure we're actually in the picture. Yep, okay. And we're gonna do the same thing again. And we're gonna separate the clumps. Now, from here, again, I could separate these again. Here, actually, why don't we do that? We can just do it with a single pitchfork, uh, over a little bit, over a little bit. Yeah, right there. And just pull them apart. Better with both. <laughs> All right. Okay, there we go. So now we've already made one, two, three, four plants from this one plant. And for sure, this baby needs to be divided too. Actually, this looks like it's three plants so let's do it because here's a plant right here there's a whole plant right here and there's one right there okay got it and here's another one right here and that's how easy it is to divide daylilies um like I said, you're really not going to hurt them. Uh, I really do suggest, however, cutting them back in the fall um, or in the early spring when they first come up. This is not the ideal time. Number one, they're going to really need a lot of water um, just because it's very hot. We're going to rework this area. We're also going to be taking out the Quanzo Day lilies there in the back. And then I've got a bunch of different things, and I'll, I'll uh, show you what I'm thinking before I actually plant them. We're going to amend this soil 
So that's, that's our weekend. I think this video is probably long enough on dividing daylilies. So what I'm going to do is I'll take a shot, show you kind of the blank slate in that major area that I'm dealing with. And then I'm going to, as the week goes on this week, I have things I want to transplant and then other things that um, I, you saw are new. So I'm going to try and place a few things. I'll take some pictures um, and you'll see what I come up with at the end. As always, thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe, hit that like button. It does make a difference. And check out some of my previous videos on the, the new beds that I created this year. It's been a busy year for sure. And remember, water your plants.